I'd like to now look at a second way of understanding principal values uh, of stress tensors. And it's always good to have multiple ways of thinking about the same thing. Uh, the way I'm going to, or the method I'm going to talk about now is an eigenvalue method. And this method is also very important to understand because when one is looking at three-dimensional states of stress, this really is the only practical way of computing principal values and maximum shear values. So, so it's an important concept just in its own right, but it's also a nice concept to have for understanding two-dimensional states of stress as an alternate. And so let me go ahead and assume that I have two coordinate frames, x, y, and an x prime, y prime frame, and they're related to each other by an angle, and I'm going to go ahead and set that angle equal to the principal angle. Okay, so that means that in the x prime, y prime frame, I have no shear stresses, and uh, I only have normal stresses in the x prime and the y prime direction. So if I think about using my transformation law in the matrix matrix form, I have my stresses in the xy frame. I pre and post multiply the, by the rotation and the transpose of the rotation where I've set the angle to theta p. And the output of that transformation, because I've chosen theta equals theta p, is a diagonal stress tensor. So I have the first principal stress and the second principal stress here, but the shear stresses are zero. And that's by, in a way, definition of what we get as a result for the principal frame. Okay? And so I'm going to manipulate this relationship and show you that sigma 1 and sigma 2 are nothing other than the eigenvalues of the stress tensor here in the xy frame. So let me go ahead and take my matrix R here, and I'm going to move it to the other side of the equality here. And that means I'm just multiplying through by R transpose. So you'll notice that the minus sign is up here now and not down here. So that I got rid of one of the matrix on, on the right side here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply out the two matrices on the left-hand side. And so if I do that, I end up with, in the first column, I have sigma 1 times cosine and sine. And then I have sigma 2 multiplying minus sine and cosine here. On the right hand side I have my stress tensor and then I have a matrix whose columns are cosine sine minus sine cosine here. So I can separate this matrix relationship out now in a nice way here is that I can take the first column and consider it as the product of the matrix times the first column over here. And that gives me one equation. And then I can take this column here and consider it the product of the stress matrix times the second column of this matrix here. And that gives me this second relationship here. And if we look at these relationships, we can now identify the eigenvector eigenvalue relationship here of the this, this system. Sigma 1, sigma 2 are simply the eigenvalues, really. And, and the reason for that is if you look at this vector here, it's the same as this vector here. So I've multiplied the matrix by a vector, and I receive back that same vector times a scaling constant. So the scaling constants are the eigenvalues, and the vectors themselves are the eigenvectors here. And so I end up with two scaling constants, or two eigenvalues in 2D, and I end up with two eigenvectors here. And those are simply the the, the the unit vectors in the two coordinate directions, x prime and y prime, they give me the principal values here. So this is one way of calculating uh, principal stresses is to try and calculate eigenvalues of the stress tensor. So recall, first of all, what the eigenvalue problem is in the abstract form. It's a matrix minus uh, a parameter times identity times a, a vector gives me zero. And all the parameters lambda and vectors n that satisfy this relationship for any given matrix sigma are known as the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So th that's the general relationship. That's a system of homogeneous equations there. And so the only way for the system of homogeneous equations to have a non-trivial solution is for the determinant of the matrix minus the parameter times the identity to be equal to zero. And that actually is the working relationship for calculating the eigenvalues, the lambdas themselves, because if I mo compute this determinant, I'm going to end up with a polynomial in lambda. Okay, That polynomial is quadratic in the 2D case. In the 3D case, it's cubic. And it has this form, minus lambda squared, plus something known as the first invariant of the stress, 
times lambda minus the second invariant of the stress. And so, and we had definitions for those before. The first invariant is the trace of the stress, and the second invariant in 2D is the determinant. So it's easy to calculate the trace and the determinant, so it's easy to calculate the coefficients of this polynomial here. And so, it, and it's second order, so there's two roots, and those are the two principal values. One gives us a maximum, one gives us a minimum. Uh, in 3D, you end up with three principal values. The uh, Taking the determinant will give you a cubic polynomial, minus lambda cubed, plus the trace times lambda squared, minus the second invariant of the stress, the second invariant for the 3D case, that is, times lambda, plus the third invariant of the stress, which in the 3D case is the determinant, equals zero. So one can also solve this cubic polynomial for lambda, and that will give us three principal values in 3D. And we, in 3D, just as in 2D, we do order them, so sigma 1 is greater or equal to sigma 2, which is greater or equal to sigma 3. So that's, that's just a convention uh, that most people adhere to. Uh, and for each eigenvalue, there'll be an eigenvector, and those vectors are actually the three principal directions, so just like they were in the 2D case. Uh, Likewise, as with the 2D case, we can also figure out what the maximum shear is. If I take the difference between the max and the minimum principal value, so assuming that they're ordered, divide by 2, that gives me the maximum shear also. So I can calculate maximum normal stresses and maximum shears by computing the eigenvalues of the stress matrix. So Now in 3D, you would typically not do this by hand, but uh, uh, a good calculator will be able to do this as well as simple uh, numerical analysis programs like MATLAB and things like that would be able to do it. So in general, you don't do these types of calculations by hand. In 2D, you can do them by hand. It's relatively easy. But in 3D, you would be using the uh, eigenvalue method almost always.